Welcome to the Society Sucks podcast. Today we have with us a jujitsu purple belt who is a mother of two and has over 300, 530,000 followers across TikTok and Instagram. It is Fafa Rocha. Yes. Thank you. Oh, wow. I didn't know you guys were watching the TikTok account. I thought you guys were only. Yes, no, yeah. We had to do some research. <laughs> we had to do some research. Yeah. That's awesome. Question. Thanks so for having me you? here. How are you? I am good. I am good. Thank God. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing Doing great. We're excited actually. for this conversation yes. because, you know, we share a lot of the same interests, passions, and plus from your captions on Instagram, we can tell you're very well spoken mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we can't just, we can't wait to dive deep into all that. Yes. Okay. Well, I write more. I write better than I speak, just so you know. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. well, here I we like go. writing better than I can speak. So I can, I can just translate. I can like more into words than I can actually speak. I feel like there's so much going on in my head. Mm. I got to get a piece of paper and pen mm -hmm. and just write it down my ideas. Yeah. Like I journal a lot. I have a lot of journals. I write my thoughts on a piece of paper. And sometimes I like to share over there. But I yeah, feel like that, that actually is extremely important. Sometimes, you know, setting time to just write whatever we say. Because I feel like once you put it on paper, we're able to process it a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Yes, so that, that makes a lot of meditate it on it and yeah, and it's just there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I guess I mean that's one interesting thing that we can talk about right now is um is journaling. You know, when when did this practice come into play? And do you have any other like mindful practices that you do for your body or your mind? Yeah, both of them. I mean, yes, um journaling is one. Um, so in the morning, first in the morning. I like to get up while I cook breakfast. I like to listen to a podcast. Yesterday, I listened to you guys' podcast. Oh, with, wow. Uh, there we go. Anthony Cruz? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that was my podcast that I was um, that I heard yesterday. Um, I always pick a podcast and I listen to it. And when they say interesting things, I write it down a little bit. Then I like reading. Um, I read my Bible a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Take notes, other other books as well and just taking notes and you know um, mm. um then eating breakfast i like to eat clean um try to eat clean most of the time 80 percent of the time mm -hmm. um and then then yeah i like to prepare my day ahead if i do that in the morning i know i'm gonna have a good day yeah. so i just like to prepare my mind to what's to come mm. awesome it's important yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a lot of good stuff right there. And I guess, you know, a lot of people, when they start implementing, implementing these practices, uh, usually stems from them wanting a change or them just wanting to, yeah, basically make a 180 for themselves. What was the inspiration for you wanting to start to, you know, put these practices in your life and, and start to look more into your own development as a person? Um, when I became more spiritual, I guess, um, I feel like once you become more spiritual, the physical is not as important. Like you don't stress about the little things anymore, the, the things that you would before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're more compassionate. You become more patient towards others. And you just want to learn more, learn more and really prove all the aspects of your life, your relationship with mm -hmm. your husband, with your kids, with others, you know yeah i definitely do agree with that um how, what do you feel like was the turning point for you um saying that you became more spiritual was there like a certain event or was it maybe you studying yourself that led into i'm going to become more spiritual and then that led into everything else oh man um it has been a journey so oh i would have to have like a couple hours just to say anything but let me try to summarize um I've had like my parents were they were Catholics um they were very dysfunctional when I was a kid so I witnessed a lot of bad stuff mm. um but at one point my mom became Christian and I with her I saw a big time change she was another person even her skin was different mm -hmm. she used to have this um skin disease psoriasis that it's there's no cure for it um and once she became in tune with her spirit she became more spiritual she gave her life to, and became you know jesus follower you mm -hmm. know she was cured 
like her skin was glowing. She had, you know, she stopped smoking, drinking, you know, she became another person. So right there, I knew something like what changed? Something changed. She's completely another person, right? Mm -hmm. So my dad as well became also, he was an alcoholic, drug addict, same thing. He changed. Uh Like he is my mentor today. Like when I need an advice, dad, and he always has like the perfect thing to tell me. And it's like, Uh he just lifts me up and I'm like, thanks dad. Um, So this is when I was a kid. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you don't want God, spirituality, Mm. like, Mm -hmm. who cares? You know, I want to do all the wrong things. Let me experience by myself, you know, all these things, having fun and party and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, Through all this, you know, ups and downs that I had, um, I had some supernatural encounters that I could experience, that I experienced like God's presence. Um, And it's a long story. I feel like for another day but um yeah and I knew right there there was that was more than just like this physical world you know what I mean but still it wasn't enough for me to I wasn't mature enough to understand my path um it was you know through ups and downs life um death of you know loved ones financial struggles and and you know like everything in your life um that I I start reading a bible that I never had read it before and there's a book in the bible called the book of proverbs that it's very practical Mm. advises and I start like just applying those things in my life and then my life just started like working out in all areas of my life and it was you know, simple things like don't lie, don't, you know, do good to others, don't do evil, like basics, good, you know, basic stuff. And I I start noticing like improvements of my, on my character, on my mood, and then just digging deep, you know what I mean? It's um, the Bible talks a lot about the mind, right? The battle of your mind. And I believe your mind is everything. Your mind, it's where is your emotions, your desires. So I'm a very, um, how do you say, empathetic person. Um, so I have to be in tune with my emotions and I have to be able to, to recognize my thoughts. I have to be in control of it or it goes to a darker place, right? So, so once I understood that's what I needed to do to be in a good place and influence people, my family, you know, people that I work with, you know like just made sense and then you know just reading more and wanted to learn more and the podcasts and videos on youtubes and this and that and just talking to people that's mind like it you know that's all like contribute to your growth mm, wow. did i answer your question i don't no, know ab- yeah <laughs> absolutely that was perfectly well worded okay. no that's amazing because that's what we want to do we want to like dive deep into that and see what really sparked growth because then that that allows other people to resonate with that like oh wow i was in that spot or, you know, maybe like you said, like you grow up, you know, with a spiritual surroundings or, you know, a family that's spiritual, and then it doesn't resonate until you're much older, you have your own set of problems and issues. Yes. And that's when it starts to, you can actually apply it. Um, yes, absolutely. But, yeah, there is one thing yeah. I noticed in your bio that yes. I would like to ask yes. about. And yes. I believe it to be quite like a powerful statement. Yes, and it's definitely. about Jesus over religion. religion so yes. could you elaborate on like what this means to you? Um, yes. Okay. So if you think of Jesus, right, he wasn't religious himself. He wasn't religious at all. He broke a bunch of rules. Like, um, for instance, there's the story in the Bible. I don't know if you guys are familiar or not, um, that he was talking to a a Samaritan woman Mm. back in the days you weren't, you weren't even supposed to talk to women just the man and the woman alone and not even that it was more than that it was more like um cultural like jews didn't couldn't talk to samaritans so he broke all the rules because he knew the woman's heart he knew she was hurt she was in need of a savior you know what i mean so and it goes it goes much more than that it goes like the jews had a the the sabbath like a day out of the week that they 
they did they didn't do no work because supposedly it's um the day of the lord they couldn't do nothing right mm -hmm. um jesus did a bunch of things a bunch of good things like he healed people you know he did a bunch of good things like he wasn't really himself he wasn't religious right so that that alone i'm like yeah. and and it goes you know it's not like god doesn't see like you're outside of what you do because i feel like religion is is you know it's just a bunch oh i have to read my bible i have to read to church i have to go to church i have to do that it, it's not even about that it's about like i read my bible because i like learning like oh let me learn this and that and how to battle the, the thoughts of my mind let me you know like let me get inspired let me not because I have to, but because I enjoy to, right? Mm -hmm. So when I say Jesus is bigger than religion, that's what I mean. Like, um, you know, I'm not religious, um, and but I love Jesus. I, you know, he's my savior and, and, and he's my everything. Um, so yeah, that's what I meant. Like, oh yeah, um, no, that's, that's, that's the, awesome. the whole, you know what I mean? The whole, like, and God doesn't see you in your outside. He sees your heart. That's the only thing. You know what I mean? Because even now, like, um, there's religious people that say, oh, you can't tattoo your body. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can. It's not, it's, it's beyond that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's your heart. It's your intentions. It's who you are and who you created to be. So. No, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that because it's like, Nowadays, religion makes it seem like you have to look at a person, you have to look at what church they go to, what kind of people they're with, and and they judge you off of that. Like, mm -hmm. what kind of communities are you with? Are you going? Are you, if you're not going to my, even within their your own know, religion, so you know, if you're not going to my church, yeah. you know, you're not. You, we don't share the same values or beliefs. So, so there's like a lot of division happening there. And and for you to say that, you know, now nah, let's just keep it simple. Jesus is my savior. Jesus is a, is the man i'm going to follow and that's i feel like that's very powerful yeah, that's it to, that's you know, it <laughs> yeah exactly and so with with uh with your social media content right like you're, you're very open about you know your your passions and what you like to speak on um what what purpose do you wish to serve like with your with your social media mm, the good one uh, influence people to do good to you know maybe reconcile them with their purpose you know with god um for them to know that there's more mm -hmm. there's more than you know this mediocre this basic life that we live in that there's another world even that our physical eyes cannot see there mm -hmm. is more and not only that like um for them to know that they have a purpose and they also can impact other people's life. You know what I mean? They're important. They are unique. We are created to, we're unique. Like I'm not you, you're not me. Like what you do, it's not what I do best and vice versa. Mm. You know, I can never be you. You can never be me. You know what I mean? So I don't know, just to influence and motivate, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's, that's what I want to oh, do. That's beautiful. No, I think that's a beautiful message. And I feel like, I mean, when you do that with social media and you just put that intention out for people, only good can come from that. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like with social media, is there is there like an applicable thing that you feel like people could start doing just to right now, say someone's listening, sitting down, watching, what can we try to do to improve our quality of life? And do you think like, is there like a certain thing that you should do, maybe a certain mindset? quality life okay um be aware of your surroundings who you hang out with mm -hmm. what books you read what music are you listening what are you watching mm -hmm. because they're all gonna impact mm -hmm. who you're gonna become mm -hmm. so if you're aware of that if you can pick that you will you 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 start to create your future mm -hmm. so i feel like by doing that you're you know you automatically selecting projecting your future if you can do those things mm. no that's that that makes a lot of sense yeah, because we always go back to it stems from awareness like if you're not aware of your surroundings if you're not honest with yourself about what it is you're consuming on a regular basis you, you can never really start to change who who you are so it's like it all stems from questioning your surroundings questioning what it is around you and uh, i feel like that's when true change can start to happen yes 
totally agree. I definitely do agree with that. Yeah. And so with social media, right? Like how much, how much time does this take out of your day? Or like, what, how do you, uh, like, does it, is it just come from inspiration? Like you're just sitting down one day, you're like, you know what, I need to share this with people or is it more structured for you? Mm. So I've been, um, I've been investing my time more on stories than I have been on posts. And, but I feel like it's seasons too. Sometimes I post at the time, sometimes I take a break, but with my messages is definitely when, you know, I just read a book or I just heard something and that resonated in me. And then I want to tell someone about it. So I write it down. And if it's, I write to my husband, Hey, what do you think? He was like, you should share that. I'm like, yeah, okay, let me share that. And then I'll share it. And then I always get like, even if it's just like one person sending me like a DM saying, oh, that was amazing. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Then I know like I did my part. You know, it made my my day. I don't care if if I have a thousand comments. If, uh, you know, if I can get one that really meant something for them, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah. Yeah, no, that's that, that's beautiful right no, there. No, that is. That, that makes me wonder, going back and from the beginning of social media, so how did you decide, you know, today's the day I'm going to start creating content? What was the turning point for that? Mm, let me see. So Instagram, I, mm-hmm. <laughs> Instagram, I have Instagram for like a, when it wasn't even when you know was very few people that had instagram Mm -hmm. was very secretive so if you had it you were cool like i I have instagram since like 2009 2010 2010 yeah 2010 so and it was like those little pictures that i don't know if you guys were there by then but it was a completely different scenario so Mm -hmm. by then was just like posting random pictures you didn't there was no hashtags there's nothing of that nobody was there um and then I feel like when you know with with me and my husband we all went to jiu to gym and mm-hmm. you know he he's well known in the community mm-hmm. um we have kids that do this and we have you know business so I needed to start investing more on social media for the business so mm-hmm. you know I was doing the business and you know just sharing a little bit of my life sharing a little bit of my life and when when I noticed that I was impacting people's life that people wanted to know a little bit more I said but here's the thing I've you know I've tried to go to another route like a couple years ago like four years ago I decided I created a, a fashion YouTube channel oh, really? um that because you know fashion another thing that i like to uh-huh. um so i i decided to do that and you know it started to grow a little bit a little bit but since i start seeing the people that mm-hmm. was part of this world mm-hmm. it was a big turn off for me and then i instantly like was like no that's not it mm-hmm. although my goal was still to inspire people. So mm-hmm. I knew I knew that my goal was inspire people. I was just doing in the wrong route. Ooh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, no, that's fashion. It's not it. even though I like it. That's not my thing because, you know, it was like I don't know. Even I was getting like opportunities, like oh, you want to collab? Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, we're gonna send money. Can you do this? It was just like no like that's not who I am I don't want to do that is that what I what is that what it takes for me to become successful at this niche then I don't want it so I I I stopped doing that I still love fashion um and then I realized you know I'm just gonna be myself I'm just Mm. gonna be myself and that's me I like doing that so I'm just gonna share what I like doing Mm. you know so yeah no, that, that's awesome. And I think that's a, that's a big lesson for people everywhere. It's because we yeah, feel like we have to sure. be tied down to a niche, no matter what, you know, for people who want to pursue content creation, right? It's like, oh, well, I've already been down this avenue. I'm kind of going at it. But now that's attached to your identity. That's attached to your name. And mm-hmm. people feel like they're stuck yeah. there. But, you know, for you, you're saying it's okay to you know, just be authentic to yourself. If you feel something yeah. that isn't resonating with you, 
to, yes. you know, you can always switch avenues and, and keep pursuing that. And it's been working out for you as well, too, because you have yeah. over 500,000 followers on Instagram. You're doing good on or on TikTok and doing TikTok. well. Yeah. Yeah. So TikTok, it yeah. was no TikTok's a little different. I feel like mm-hmm. um, I'm still trying to merge the two accounts uh, mm-hmm. to transmit my message. But TikTok's a little different because it's a different platform, right? Mm-hmm. Different algorithm. Yeah, so uh, but TikTok... Also, I had I had TikTok before TikTok was a thing, mm-hmm. um, and be, it, it was before COVID. I post a video because I like dancing too. That's another thing yes. that I like doing, I like dancing. Mm-hmm. So I post a video of me dancing, uh, standing next to my daughter. Right. Um, so it went viral because on the video that was dancing, I say something, oh, this here I am. Um, My daughter always makes fun of me when I try to dance. And then people got really confused, like, wait, who's the daughter? Who's the daughter? What do you mean? You are lying. She's (laughs) not your daughter. No, you're like 15, stop lying. And then it created engagement, right? And then people were sharing that video and then it blew out and people start following me, following me, following, following me. And, and then I, you know, whenever I felt like it, you know, posting, uh, you know, funny videos, I would like skits too. Um, mm-hmm. I would post it there and start doing really well. And I, and, and from there I created traffic to Instagram. Mm-hmm. So majority of my followers on Instagram, I feel like it came from TikTok too. Um, so, so yeah. So on, on TikTok, I share um, a little bit more about like motherhood, me as a mom of teenagers. Um, I share a little bit of jujitsu there as well because I feel like TikTok doesn't know what jujitsu really is. Like it yeah. really few people that know what jujitsu is. So mm-hmm. um, I do share a little bit more like relationship on TikTok. Like TikTok is, is like I say, it's different. Yeah. Although Instagram, you know, with the new real thing, it's like migrating like content it's just migrating content from tiktok uh, to, to instagram it's becoming instagram's becoming the new tiktok so yeah, um, we'll see. Very we'll true. See. i yeah. might start just like posting whatever i already have there in there and mm-hmm. who knows one question that pops into my mind when you talk about instagram and then tiktok and then family and then jujitsu mm-hmm. so like how do you decide what gets your attention? I know like you have obligations, you know, as a mom, but you know, with social media, like it's whether you want to or don't, you know, jujitsu, maybe it's an obligation, maybe it's if you want to, you don't as well. So when do you decide, you know, this deserves more attention today? This is this, or maybe like you say, today's the day where I just need time to myself. Yeah. There's days like this too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, it's just like, habits I created habits and and plan my week ahead so I know where to invest my time more um like I run a business the gym with my husband Mm -hmm. so it's a daily uh stuff I check emails I check accounts uh, deal with memberships I deal with people that want to do pause cancel stuff like that um I also teach uh, a fitness class um i've seen that twice twice a week at the gym more for like moms while the the kids are doing the jiu-jitsu class i take all the moms and we all work out together super cool but that does require you know my time as well yeah, like time there, as well mm-hmm. like that. so sometimes i divide myself into 10 persons <laughs> but <laughs> yes I was that but, um, easy, right? but what's like what comes first is definitely family like um i cook I cook um, Monday through Thursday. I, I cook like four days of the week. We only eat out on weekend. So uh, that's number one. You know, the fridge needs to have food and, and there's always food and dinner it needs to be made for us to eat. Um, then just um, know that the gym stuff is up to date. Uh, cells are doing good. All the other stuff's doing good. And then like, honestly, social media, I try to, you know, share a little bit of my day as it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, like I say, only after, you know, that morning ritual that I have that I'm inspired, then I share. If I'm not, and if I know I'm not going to have time, then I won't. 
and oh, then I won't. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it depends on the day. Like yeah. tomorrow is Friday. So tomorrow I have appointments. I got to go to the dentist. I'm going to get my nails done. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to work. Mm -hmm. in, and I created my own schedule too. You know, if I don't want to work tomorrow, I'm not going to work. But then I catch up on the other day. Um, so it, like I see it like as the week ahead, what's the priority, not as the day, but like the week was the priority of this week. And then I'll, I'll get it done with that week. Oh yeah. No, that makes sense right there. And, uh, speaking of jujitsu, when did jujitsu come into your life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and was it an instant passion for you? No. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. So, um, when I met my husband, he was already a blue belt in jiu-jitsu so oh. i used to be that girlfriend that would come to class sit on the bench and watch him wow. and I had like no <laughs> right? he tried like i tried he was like oh trying to convince me trying to do this trying to do that and then I, I i did like a class or two and i didn't get it i'm like oh that's not for me i'm too girly that's not for <laughs> me. It's feminine right and then and then, you know, like um, throughout the years, he, he continued training until he got his black belt. Um, we had an opportunity to open up our own gym. And it was only after we opened up the gym when he was a black belt that I actually decided to do this. <laughs> oh, wow. In 2009, um, we went to Barcelona for the ADCC in Barcelona. Yeah. Do you know what ADCC is? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a major, jiu -jitsu, major jiu -jitsu. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, for the guys that don't know, that is a major jujitsu competition. Yes. You'll see yes. the best of the best yeah, going to televise compete. everything. It's the awesome. Olympics of Jiu Jitsu. Yes. So in 2009, we went to Barcelona just to watch the ADCC. And mm -hmm. when I got there, I saw those girls like, like, Killing, killing oh, it like Grace. So um, cool. yeah. Gracie was there. And, um, what's the other one? Michelle Nicolini was there. Like a bunch of you know, big names was there. And I'm like, oh, I want to be like them. I want to be like them. And then my husband looked at me. Really? It just took you like ten years for you to actually. I'm not going to do it. And I'm like, oh, I want to do it. So, so you know, it, it was end of 2009, and then 2010. I start training, I start training. Um, and then, in, and then when, you know, when I was like, this is what I want to do. Not because, because at the first time it was my husband with, well, at the time, my boyfriend that was trying to convince me to do it. So I didn't want to mm -hmm. do it, but now it was me. I wanted to do it. Right. Ooh, yeah. So as soon as I start training, I was training twice a day, morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon. And I was loving it. I was dreaming about jiu-jitsu i was watching wow. videos i was like <laughs> she got the bug ask my husband how do you do this who are you it's like who are you where did this all came from uh -huh. and then i would i you know i signed myself up on some competitions and then you know doing really good so after two years then he gave me my blue belt mm. um and then unfortunately because i regret it i took a break oh great. yeah oh yeah i know so mm -hmm. i took a break as a blue bell you know like the syndrome the blue bell syndrome yeah, yeah. that happened to me yeah, yeah. so so i took a break um i well i tried to compete as a blue bell and i got like the girl for me like flying arm bar in like three seconds oh no oh and they're like almost broke and i'm like Traumatized. Mm. And then from I was just like coming up an excuse like no, my family, you know, I have to just be there for my family. Uh, but then, you know, it came a point that all of my teammates were like accelerating, improving, and evolving. Mm. And I wasn't right mm -hmm. because I, I, I'm a gym woman. I was still there watching them. I was not, but I wasn't doing the classes, but I was there yeah, watching classes. them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, even my kids, when I went the, before I, I took the break, they were little. And in two years, I kid you not, they grew and they, you know, they were kicking my butt. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay, and they were kicking my butt. And then from that moment, I knew I can, ne I will never quit again. Even if like, I, I just gotta be consistent. Even if I, even if I come once a week, I'm still learning. I'm still like, yeah, true. You know, like evolving a little bit on my own speed. So since that, you know, which I said I regretted taking taking that break, mm -hmm. but um, learned my lesson and I haven't quit it ever since. So <laughs> awesome. That actually makes me think. You know, there's a lot of like misconceptions for like girls that want to come into jujitsu. You know, what do you think is a big misconception about jujitsu? that you saw from a female perspective what do you mean elaborate like, more was there something that you feel like a lot of girls tend to be like oh this is not me you know maybe grappling is not this maybe i can't be in there with the guys or something like uh, that you know okay yeah there's definitely a misconception yes mm -hmm. and we see a lot in the gym um it can be how do you say um what's the word intimidating it could be mm. very intimidating you know mm -hmm. for a girl to walk into the yeah. gym and see a mat full of guys you know wanted to rip their heads yeah. off <laughs> um yeah um i feel like they'll be more comfortable in in to start to start at least um training with girls mm -hmm. and and then evolve from that but um yeah it is and well because you know back in the days there was more men right so mm -hmm. it's it, it's still carry carries on a little bit like we like if you have the same percentage um how many more men to jiu-jitsu than women mm -hmm. a lot more right lot more but but i feel like we, we we're gonna get there we're gonna get there yeah. it's gonna be um it is it is i mean looking back 10 years of training looking back you know girls didn't train and now you know just yeah, no, there's, there's, it's yeah. definitely growing what would you say to you know the female jujitsu practitioner that wants to start out and you know really wants to go into the gym for the first time you know what are some what's some advice you would give to her or anyone oh yeah, yeah. Um, so just go to learn if you know what i mean like well first of all what is your goal you got to know what you, what's the results they want, right? Because not everybody that does jujitsu does, jiu -jitsu does it for the same purpose, right? Um, I actually, I when I started, even though I got inspired by uh, competitors, the girls that were competing back in the days, my purpose was more self-defense. I wanted to learn how to defend myself in, in case that I need it. But there's people that wanted to become sociable um people who who wanted to get healthier and hang out with more positive people mm -hmm. for competition for it. so first what is your goal and from recognizing what your goal is learn as much as you can ask mm -hmm. questions um and you know just and watch always watch not even if you get injured right people think that when you get injured I'm going to stop coming to class. This is one of the things that we, we recommend to people that say, oh, pause my membership. I'm not going to come. I'm injured. My husband always says, do come. Even if you're not on the mat, you're visually learning. You're there. You know, you're processing mentally what's the position. You, you're observing a lot more. Um, so that and I, but for like a white belt, I would say don't expect much because you're really just trying to survive. You're really just trying to defend, right? Before you attack, you need to learn how to defend. So mm -hmm. I would say try basis more on defense. And then when you get a little comfortable on defending yourself, attack. Um, but that's me, you know, there's people that think otherwise. Um, so I think that's, I hope I answered your question. No, that, was, oh, yeah. uh, that was a perfect way to answer. Yeah. I, I mean, us as white belts, um, we'll definitely take any advice from a purple belt. Yeah. And we know what kind of work and, you know, dedication that it takes to get that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that it makes so much sense. And we're going through that right now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, <laughs> How so. long have you guys been training? 
Uh, I think it's, oh, it's less than a year. It's about to be yeah. a year it's about soon. Be okay. soon. Yeah. So, right. I mean, but it's definitely a journey that we're enjoying. And, mm. you know, any advice is appreciated. You guys train every day? Are you guys like... We're not training every day. Not every day. Okay. Like three, okay. three times a week. Yeah, I, I try uh, to do three times a week. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what is your goal? Where do you guys go in jiu-jitsu? Well, mm. I, at first it was honestly just for cardio for me. But okay. now I've seen it as something so much bigger than that. And now I actually want to compete and yeah. I want to be like really good. So now That's I'm just awesome. going to dedicate myself to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think mostly it's the same as well. I think before... I, I think maybe like the self-defense aspect as well mm -hmm. too. And, you know, it giving you that sense of confidence that if anything were to happen, you know, you know what you could do. And, you know, obviously you wouldn't want that, but you know that you're secure with yourself. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of the sense that it gave me at first. And then now it's more of a, I'm really want to get good at it too. And, you know, try to compete mm -hmm. and, you know, just create content from it too, as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, no, awesome. jiu -jitsu is a beautiful game. No, it really jiu -jitsu, is. um, yeah, it's not really not only good for your body, it's good for your your and mind too. But sometimes it messes up your mind, so your mind gotta be strong. That's mm -hmm. why I like to do my meditation in the morning, reading my Perfect. stuff, um, mm -hmm. because as a white belt, as a blue belt, once in the ten plus ten years of training. There are sometimes that I just wanted to cry, like oh, I hate this. Why I'm doing this? <laughs> and then, and then we come home. No, I want it more. I, I know why I'm doing this. Yeah. And it, it's a constant pot battle, right, in your mind. Um, but yeah, but it's awesome. It's yeah, really good. Good. it really humbles you in all yeah. aspects. And not even that, like the bond. Like it becomes. They say you know, jujitsu family. It really becomes your family. Like mm -hmm. you. Because, you know, it's the, the same people like-minded um, there to try and improve themselves, not only on the mats, but off the mats as well. Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love I'm, it. I'm yeah. curious now to say that, you, I mean, you were purple belt. So how many times have you competed? And, you know, what kind of mindset do you have if you have competed going in? What kind of mindset did you have going in? Do you set expectations? So, um, I have competed very little times mm -hmm. and I found out like competition is not for me. Mm. Um, in the beginning as a white belt, I did compete, uh, like more mm -hmm. than I ever competed after. So I competed in a couple tournaments as a blue belt. I competed once and as a purple belt, I competed once. So my goal, I told my husband, my goal is at least once at every color bell, I have mm -hmm. to compete. Yeah. Um, not necessarily that I'm going to become a competitor, but I just wanted to, you know, like challenge myself a little bit and, 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 and feel me out. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like because I, I'm the type of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do my best, right? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately with jujitsu, I don't train as much as I wish I could because of all of the other stuff that I have to take care of, like, like the cooking part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For me to cook dinner every night, I have to either cook during the day or, or skip jujitsu. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'm always like planning like this, right? So I train two to three times a week. And I know that's not enough for me to do what my absolutely best in competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when I do compete training just two to three times a week, I don't expect anything. I'm gonna, I expect that I'm gonna learn no matter if I win or if I lose. Mm -hmm. And and that's it. And I'm gonna have fun. Yes. I think, I think that's the biggest takeaway is so just try to have fun with it because at the end of the day everyone has the same goals around you and and everyone's just trying to accomplish the same thing so it's just about going in there with a fun attitude yes right? yes now my husband is a professional competitor mm -hmm. my kids okay. are as well that's all they do mm. that's all they do they they train in the morning they train in the afternoon they work out they rehab their bodies they go mm -hmm. massages that's they do the absence cool. so they better win 
they yeah. better win. You know exactly. what I mean? That's like true. they better win. They 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 are supposed to do good. They are supposed mm -hmm. to because that's what they do. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I since I do jujitsu as a hobby for self defense uh, purposes, so. I'm not expecting me to win, but if I do, great. And if I don't, great too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, great either nice. way. It's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. On the topic of kids and jujitsu, mm -hmm. to other parents out there who have kids and and I guess what advice do you have for them? Do you feel like they should, you know, bring them up or raise them doing jujitsu? Or should the should the curiosity stem from the kids? Or like what's what's your stance on that? All right, so yes. good question. Excellent question. <laughs> mm. um, so when we open up the gym, our kids were little young, right? They were very young, they were little. Um, they were five and eight. My son was five and my, my daughter was, no, not it, no, what I'm saying was more than that. It was like two, I don't know. They were very, I don't even remember. They were yeah. very young, yeah. but um. Even though we were, you know, the gym owners, our kids hated jujitsu. Hmm. They would throw tantrums. Really? Yes. What? They were like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. This is too hard. I don't want it. And we'll cry. So embarrassing us, right? Because there we are trying to convince people, sign up your kid. And our own kid would do that, right? Oh, wow. How we... we little by little we convinced them that you know they were there to learn to learn right that we weren't expecting them to be the best in class we mm -hmm. weren't expecting them to become a professional in that they just just like they have to go to school they will have to go to the gym mm -hmm. and learn you know what I mean so yeah. my my husband he always says you know jiu-jitsu is not a sport jiu-jitsu is a lifestyle you just need it. Yeah. it you just need it you just need to know you know what i mean because so that's what what we did to our kids mm -hmm. and now you know fast forward 10 years later both of them they come up to us and they were like thank god you guys made us stay and wow. didn't took us out because now i love it now it, it's part of me you know what i mean mm -hmm. because of that and you, even me, like, imagine me in jiu-jitsu when I was a kid. Oh, today, you know what I mean? You too. Like, all of us, think about it. You yeah. know, when you're a kid, you don't want to do anything. You're a kid. You don't know anything. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And, and you know, because we own a gym, we always hear, you know, parents, you know, taking them out of, Jiu-Jitsu saying, oh, he doesn't want to. I don't want to force him to do it. Yeah. And we're like, well, I bet your kid doesn't want to go to school either. That's so true. That's so good. That's so true. Go to school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. I, I remember actually reading a thing that's that was saying, um, you know, you tell your kids to brush their teeth, you know, wash their hands for a reason. You know, they, they don't want to do those things, but you know, it's a necessary thing. They start to learn. Yes. Eventually when they grow up, they just start to do it on their own because they know, you know, you should. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you start to implement that with jujitsu school, I mean, it makes sense because it's just, it should be a lifestyle. It's not like a, a task you have to do. It's like a thing that you just do because you're, you're supposed to, right? Yeah. You get, yeah, like mental benefits out of it, physical benefits yeah. out of it. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like even for like bullying, right? Not only bullying mm. for the, the, the kid not to get bullied and know how to defend themselves, but I do believe that the kid that does jujitsu, he won't bully the other kid. He definitely you know, won't. He, he, That's true. No That's better. True. You know, I feel, like, I feel like it's you good. You know what he's capable of doing, like you know, he, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. benefits yeah. all around. Yeah, that makes sense. The reason I was asking that was for that same reason of like, if you bring them into it, will they instead turn against it and hate it because oh, I've done this all my life, you know, I was forced into it. But then I was also thinking about you know when they get to a certain point, they'll look back and be grateful that they learned all this from a young age that they've been brought up into it. So I guess, yeah, making it part of your routine. Yeah. They don't like school, you know, they don't like to do certain exactly. things, but if you know that it's best for them, then I mean, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I mean, I haven't met 
anyone who said, oh, I regretted doing jiu-jitsu since I was a kid. Mm. I haven't met a one, you know what I mean? And since because jiu-jitsu is the lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's different if it was like a sport, right? If it was a sport and then I get it like, oh, my parents forced me and I hate this. Mm. But yeah. since jiu-jitsu is more of a lifestyle, it's, mm -hmm. you don't hear people Yeah, and I guess that that's how I was seeing it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'll see it like as a sport because like maybe someone prefers tennis over basketball or something. So it's like they prefer that. It's a different energy outlet. But with jujitsu, it's so many principles. It's it, like you said, it's yes. like with bullying. Like it, it just it seeps into every other aspect of life. Yeah, you know, actually that reminds me of we jujitsu is definitely a lifestyle, and I, you know, I've grown to start to see it that way as well. You know, what philosophies have you learned? from jujitsu what does jujitsu gave you you know philosophy wise and benefited you in life like just outside of it good question let me see um well to be a black belt i mean i'm not a black belt yet but i'll get there and i'll get there if i continue if i don't quit be consistent but to become a black belt you it's not even about the color it's not even about becoming a black belt it's becoming a black belt in life it's becoming a good person. It's having a good mentality. It's, it's, you know, when you become a black belt, people look up for you. And it's what example, what, you know, are you being a role model? You know what I mean? So to me, you know, a black belt jujitsu, but like a shitty person life. You know, sorry. You know what I mean? Like you have to be a black belt all around. Mm. You know, character, discipline everything the way you treat others yeah. the way you treat your students the way you treat others they are um are more mature in the sport as well mm -hmm. so that's one thing that i've i've noticed you know from just meeting so many people in jiu-jitsu that a true a true black belt is a true black belt all mm -hmm. around all mm -hmm. around not just wow. in jiu-jitsu I love that. I've never that's heard a good that way. Before. That's a good way to look at it because Super it's good. about being the role model. It's about what you represent. Yeah. It's about what you bring. And plus, that color that people see represents years of of a type yeah, of mindset, guess. a different type of work ethic. You know, it is. It's all reflected in who that person is. So that ma that makes a lot of sense, right there. Wow. And uh, with with your husband actually being a black belt and being so well known in the jiu jitsu community, mm -hmm. and, and also a UFC fighter, right? So all, all these that, things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so all crazy. these things you know what's it like being married to a ufc fighter and how does it feel when when he when he was stepping into that cage he's like what, what kind of things did that bring mm -hmm. forth don't knowing that he was in physical danger yeah um yeah so his first fight in the ufc was against cowboy Cerrone, and oh. it was like it was a feeling he was filling in for someone that got um injured and you know his manager was like do you want to fight cowboy and he was like yeah when they're like in three days he was like i'll be there three days notice whoa yeah so i didn't go i didn't i didn't come with him and it was in canada and my heart like watching at yeah. tv was like i thought i was gonna have a heart attack mm -hmm. um he lost by decision but um cowboy was like just kicking his legs kicking 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 i'm like oh his legs oh my god oh, yeah. um and then you know that was like the first you know big event that, that he did and then the other ones i made sure i was in there um and i like i always like to talk to him you know i always like talk to him and and, and i feel like I, I do a good job like talking to him and, and I always say what are you gonna do what is your goal what is your goal in the cage and then he would tell me and then when he was in there I would like scream exactly what he, he told me he was gonna do just as, like as a reminder mm -hmm. um, um but like yeah and then but you know he doesn't fight MMA anymore now mm -hmm. he's entirely focused on jiu-jitsu and thank god because <laughs> oh, yeah. it's so brutal yeah, so yeah. brutal definitely Incredible. definitely can be and uh, very extreme you know i see that y'all guys have a uh, you know a really good relationship and i think harvey had one specific question when it comes to divorce rates and you recently had you know 20 years with your husband 
and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, yeah no yeah. The, the statistic yeah. you know we found out is that half of marriages only only 50 percent of marriages make it to that 20 year mark so you know you obviously know something that a lot of people don't around here yeah. so what are some keys to like a a healthy relationship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so i could be here and tell you oh you gotta do this you gotta do that but mm -hmm. what worked out for me my husband was when we put god first mm -hmm. and i'm gonna tell you why because yes, god is love right god is everything good god is the substance of everything good so think of everything that's good God is love, God is peace, God is joy, God is gratitude, God, God is, so if you put that first, I mean, it's, it needs to work out, it will work out, you know why, because God endures all things, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, love endures all things, love um, is patient, love is kind, right, so once start like reading remember when i say i start reading the bible to him mm -hmm. and we just you know we became applying that in our lives then and you know following those biblical principles and you know just renewing the mind as well um uh, being aware of our emotions you know like knowing like there are some you not everything that you think you can say it, you know, words have power to destroy someone or lift them up and yes. uh, you can hurt people. So we're always very aware of the things that we say to each other, um, how we treat each other and just being grateful to each other. And there's a lot more, but God is, God is the center. It needs to be the center. I always say this and I hope no one gets offended, but relationship without God, it's not going to last. Mm, it's not going to last because we are, we, we are messed up. Okay. We naturally, we are selfish. We yeah. put our own interests first. And let's say in a relationship, we're two selfish person. They're not going to get along. They're all going to be like blaming each other. Like, no, you did this. No, but you did that. No, but you did this. Mm. Now, wow. a person that has God in their life, they don't put themselves first. They put others first. So they will, they step into each other's shoes and they're like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, you, I understand your point of view and I respect that and I'm sorry. And also uh, for a relationship to, to work, you need, you're need you going to be saying sorry a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because it's most important for you to be in peace than to be right. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the person that wants to be always right, it's that selfish person, right? And we don't want to be that selfish person in a relationship. You want to have peace in that relationship. So, so that's it. No, that's, wow. that's very powerful right there. Extremely and, powerful. and it makes a lot of sense when you mentioned that we are selfish, you know, humans have a lot of mistakes and flaws. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why, you know, make yourself number one, you know, you need to bring something outside of what's yes. physical to center yourself on because if you base it on your surround if you base it on the things that you have or even memories or the past you got yes. you have a weak foundation there but if you base it on something love right on everlasting peace which are the qualities of god it has to work out like you said because that yes. that's something that both of y'all are going to that's something that yes. in times of trouble you both rely on that rather yes. than your own understanding yes. yes and that's that's another thing that we've learned too when you have god it doesn't matter what goes wrong in your life you know you're gonna be okay you know that you just have this you just know you just have this sure that no matter what happens you know like things are gonna work out for you good because god is gonna look out for you mm, so yeah. that's another yeah. thing too you know yeah because you know especially in this world that we live today it's people are so like anxious you know yeah. having panic attacks and and worrying about things that it might not even happen they're they're already like thinking of the future um it, the future is not even here yet you know what i mean all you have can think of the past you can think of the future you gotta add, like live on now you gotta yeah. you know what i mean yeah so yeah, that's yeah. another thing too um, yeah no that that's awesome right there because yeah i mean that that's stuff that's reoccurring especially now it seems to be very prevalent when with so many distractions on our fingertips 
There's so many things that we can choose to get offended over or criticized for or be upset about. You know, there's a lot of things going to be thrown at you in life. And if you don't have a foundation that you can rely on for, for trust and understanding and peace, then you're always going to just be tossed around by life. And you have no, you have no sense of security within yourself because, you know, we, we're not taught these things where we don't know these things kind of, we're just thrown out there and expected to just let life do its thing. Yeah, but, yeah that's true. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I love to see the Bible as well as like, if there's people who are taking the time to write this stuff down, right? Like just these, these ancient texts of, of wisdom that that's out there for us, Mm -hmm. you know, why not look back and see how other people were dealing with these situations back then? What kind of wisdom was out there that's worked for millions of people and why not sit down and take the time to look at these things? Mm -hmm. You know, so if someone's, someone's going through it, someone's been through worse things, you know, famine and famines, plagues, wars, things like that. And they still had to practice how to have like a calm mind, how to, you know, stay strong during all this adversity. So mm-hmm. I feel like naturally we should want to, to look into the past a little bit, look into what's worked for other people and apply it in our own lives. Yes, that's right. That's one common thing that you see throughout the Bible. All of the characters in the Bible that they had, they die believing what and, and the idea on what they believed, right? Mm-hmm. And they all pretty much died in peace, mm-hmm. no matter how they died. I mean, even Jesus, hello, the hmm. man was crucified and he was still like saying, Father, forgive them for yeah. what they do. Yeah, that's mind blowing. Yeah, that is, that is quite mind blowing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And also, so I know we, we touched on faith and how, and how you grew up with it. Um, and we, we identified like the point in which there was a turning point for you. But you said, was it was it you who brought the spirituality into the relationship or was there a journey between you and, and your husband trying Ooh. to discover this thing together? Yeah. That's a good one. It was me. It was mm. me. It was, you know, through a um, encounter, like I said, one of, one of those um, supernatural encounters that I had, but the, the last one, um, Someone has, I think it was my dad, he sent me like a YouTube video and it was the video that was talking about how a human is flawed, how, you know, how we're talking about just now, how we're so selfish and we naturally, we naturally are, even if we try to change, we can't change. We need a supernatural power to be that change in us. And I cannot explain it to you guys exactly what happened, but I like to say that it was God touching my heart. Mm-hmm. From that moment, I like I just start crying. I got on my knees and then I just like start talking to, to God and apologizing um, to all the wrong things that I ever done in my life. Like, oh, I'm sorry if I hurt that person and that person and that person. Oh, you know, and then it was kind of like I was, it was a relief, right? I was becoming lighter as I was like, saying the words and, and saying sorry sorry for hurting this person sorry for hurting that person it was like washing my soul away right and oh, then by the time I was done like talking to God you know doing this prayer um I felt different I felt like I was awakened like my spirit has been awakened and then from that moment on I knew something, well, not from that moment on. There's, like I say, there was, I had other more intense supernatural powers that happened. This Mm -hmm. one's very mild. Um, But I knew like it's time, like it's, it has been calling me and I've been ignoring. It's time, you know, that I need to search this path. I need to, I need, it's calling me. And, and then by myself, I start, you know, reading the Bible and I try to go to churches too at the time, but I wasn't feeling what I need to feel at church. And, and so it wasn't even a church. It was me. It was just me and then reading and then just like, I felt different. I will look at people and truly have compassion for them and truly understanding um, why they were reacting in anger, why they were reacting in grief. What, like I would like, I would know exactly like what the per- person needed and what they needed, it's love. Mm-hmm. It's love. No matter if they're even like, 
you know, you're driving and I don't know, someone got mad at you at a traffic light and they give you the middle finger. I, as today, I don't do that. I wave, I say, I'm sorry. No. I'm, I'm, it's like I'm very passive. Yeah. I'm like, this is the, just a distraction. Like that's not, I'm not going to react to your anger i'm not gonna do that mm. um so yeah and then it was only like later on like a couple years later that my husband started like noticing a change in me and then that with um with uh he one of his best friends was muttered so he got very like emotionally imbalanced like you know, like very depressed. Um, so he started like asking questions from here, where we go. Like he was such a good person. That's not fair. But like, why? Why God would do that? And mm -hmm. then he started like, you know, asking questions and wanted to know like more. So his, you know, uh, curiosity started there and mine was already like in development. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, we kind of met and we, you know, ups and downs yeah. but even though we're in this together i feel like it's still like very personal like mm -hmm. i i have my own thing like as i told you guys that he's um in my backyard doing the absin salt right mm -hmm. he has this really ritual that every afternoon like every afternoon um he goes he he fills the tub with uh hot water put the absin salt do like the the ice bath water as well he does that and he sits down in the sun and then he meditates. So he does his own thing on his own too. You know, wow. I do my own thing on my own too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Wow. No, that's, that's great right there. Cause I feel like both people deserve their own space for their own practices, but I find it very, I guess, convenient. I know there's something supernatural in the background, but very convenient how your spiritual journey happened first just in time for when, when that tragedy happened to your husband, he could rely on, on you for some kind of insight or to, to guide him in some way, because imagine if you weren't there for that, you don't know what kind of other paths. Yeah. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason at the, the, the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And everything that happens, it, I truly believe it happens to prepare us for what's to come. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if, if I didn't recognize that this was calling me and I, I needed to become more spiritual when that happened and my husband was depressed, I wasn't going to be prepared. Like you're saying. Mm, yeah, that's true. Very true. Yeah. Well, this, yeah. this has been an amazing conversation yeah, right no, here. I feel like has. it's time to wrap it up. Yeah, definitely wrap it up. We usually like to end these with six rapid fire questions and Let's do it. Yeah, really six good. rapid fire questions. Harvey's gonna get them going right here, right now. All righty. So the first Whoa. one we have here for you is: What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, know who you are, know your identity. Um, you know, don't try to sabotage yourself. Mm. Oh, Only you can be you. Don't try to be nobody else. You're not going to succeed at being nobody else. You have to be you. So it might as well be the best version of Whoa. you. Perfect. Love that one. Uh, question number two, what is the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I once read it, this quote that said, um, don't cross oceans for people that wouldn't cross a puddle for you. Oh. And I disagree. Hmm. I think that we should do good no matter to who, oh. not without expecting getting in return. Oh. So even if you're not going to cross no puddles for me, I'm still going to cross the ocean for you. Oh, wow. That's, that's powerful right there. I love that one. Question number three, what's something that you know to be true, but that others might disagree with you on? Oh, man. All right. I'm going to get religious without getting religious, if that's okay for you guys. Go okay, ahead. So. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And I know it's truth because I had multiple supernatural encounters that we're going to have to talk it another time because mm -hmm. I, I know you guys yes. uh, vibe with us. So I would love to share that another time. But, um, 
So yeah, so I have experienced that. So when someone say, no, this is not true. That's not true. I'm like, but I know who he is. Just mm. because you don't know who he is doesn't mean it's not true. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got to, after you get to know him, then we'll talk. Mm. But if you don't know him, how can you judge? How can you say that? You know what I mean? So Jesus about Jesus. Wow. Like yeah, that. that makes perfect sense right like there. That. Question number four is what is something you wish you would have known earlier? Jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. <laughs> physically, yeah. I, uh, physically, like jiu-jitsu, like the, what we're talking about. If my mom were like, I'm going to put her in jiu-jitsu when she's five years old. Oh, mm. It's so good right now. So yeah. jiu-jitsu, I wish I knew earlier. Um, I wish I didn't quit as a blue belt. Um, and I wish I, I, I would stay more consistent. Um, and then... Um, in general, I wish I knew the peace you find within, not on the outside. Because, you know, when we're younger, we are always in the pursuit of peace, in the pursuit of happiness, right? Like, oh, my friends. Oh, but if I have a girlfriend, if I have a boyfriend, if I have that job, if I have money, if I have fame, oh, then I'm going to be happy. And no, no, peace is within. So yeah. no matter don't matter what happens outside uh, all the circumstances if you have peace inside everything else it's peaceful it's yeah. happy you know what i mean wow. so that nah, i wish i knew this earlier wow that's that's, uh, that's amazing these are really good, good ones so super far good. all right and our last question we have for you is yeah. what is one thing you think we could all do to make society suck a little less yeah, society sucks. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I feel like society gets too offended too easily, right? So I feel like we should be more tolerant with others. Like what, mm -hmm. the, the thing that I was talking about with you guys, like trying to put yourself in other people's shoes. You know, it's not only about you. We are here has one it's not just about you it's just about him well he has one right in, not in this alone with him in this together so be more tolerant with others and more exigent with us because usually it's the other way around we're so like oh but i deserve better oh but that person didn't do this for me oh i'm gonna cancel her i'm gonna stop following her on instagram like it's all about I'm so exigent with myself and not so tolerant with others. I think we should switch that and be the other way around. Like be more like analyze yourself more. Like, why am I so selfish to this to this person? Why am I so like, why do I think I deserve better than that person? Why do I think I'm, I'm more special like than that person? So I've, I feel like be more tolerant with others, be more sympathetic, more compassionate with others, kind, and be more harder on ourselves to try to improve ourselves. So if society was aware of that mm -hmm. and could come as one, it would be another world. It would, it would, you know what I mean? Everybody would love each other. Everybody would be like so... Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah no I, I love that answer because that's so true very i love true. that that's very true all righty yeah well i guess that is it these were beautiful answers i hope everyone's very taking beautiful. something away uh you know listen back to it again because there's a lot of bits of wisdom in here for everyone and yes, and man these th this was honestly an awesome conversation yeah no definitely Thank you guys i love like, it i love it i love it yes, yes. yeah i want to take time to give you your flowers and say that we appreciate you you know taking time to be here and I know someone's sitting here, you know, they just felt the spark of inspiration. They mm -hmm. felt the energy. I, hope so. I know yeah. I did. Yeah. So guys, go down to the link in the description. Where can they check you out on your social medias? All right. So if you want to have a laugh, if you want to, you know, get to see my, my funny side, go on TikTok. My handle is faithfully me. Um, and on Instagram, it's my first name as Faithusa, F-A-E-T-H-U-S-A. -A. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I Absolutely. hope, you know, like you said, you know, people could get inspired and motivated and yeah. 
Yes. Perfect. Yes. Everyone go check her out. You know, yes. she's growing her content. She posts really amazing stuff, very introspective captions that she has there for everyone. And she has a funny side to her as well on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So y'all go check that out. Oh. Links in the description, of course. And yeah. uh, with that being said, it. we appreciate you and we hope you appreciate have you guys. Day. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys um, reaching out for me. Yes. Absolutely. When, when you said it, when you, when you send the message, you know, I, obviously I had to check you out first. Yes. And when I saw the, the, the page, I'm like, this is good stuff. This ah, is good. yes. I definitely, you know, enjoy them. Like, this is good stuff. Yes. So, yeah. That's so awesome. that's, that's another thing that goes with um, uh, knowing who you are, right? Keeping your identity. Mm -hmm. um, because just like yourself, you reached out to me. Uh, there's a lot of other people that reached out for me too, saying, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And I'm like, this is not who I am. Why would oh, I do wow. why would I like, you know, like, why would I par participate in this? This is not, mm -hmm. it's not who I am. Yeah. so this is really cool for this opportunity so i appreciate oh, it that's awesome wow. no, we're so glad it resonated wow. hearing those words on you have no idea how happy it makes yes, us it does. that's awesome thank you so much for that mm -hmm. and with that being said guys we appreciate you mm -hmm. make sure to check her out and have a great day yes we'll just